I'll introduce Lennart Meyer, who will be telling us about equivariant topological modular forms. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak here. So as Dan said, I was speaking about equivariant topological modular forms. So this will be partially based on joint work with David Gebner, and uh, I will also, I mean, Jacob Lewy really laid the basis of all of this. So it was kind of be based also, of course, on work of Jacob Lewy. And I will also be happy to report on work by Dexter Chua, who made some uh, kind of exciting computations recently. Okay, and my basic plan is first to give some reminders uh, uh, on elliptic curves and topological modular forms to kind of lay the basis, basics. Then um, introduce what equivariant topological modular forms are. And because it's a computational seminar here, I will mostly speak about how to actually compute these things and report on some computations uh, for CN equivariant TMF on, and for S1 equivariant TMF. Okay, so. So let's start talking a little bit about elliptic curves. So um, as I've written here, elliptic curves are smooth uh, curves cut out by a cubic equation. So a cubic equation, so it is uh, like, might be something like uh, uh, y squared z equals x cubed plus xz squared, something like this. And this would be uh, in uh, the projective two space. So we have uh, you no know, point in projective space is the square by three coordinates and uh, um, by a homogeneous equation of degree three, we can cut out a curve. And this would be over some ring R. So, and I use the word smooth here. So what do I mean by this? Essentially, I don't want to allow things like this or things like this. These things are something I don't want to have. So I want something which really looks like a manifold uh, if it were over say the complex numbers or the real numbers. And I also want to say, so if R is equal to C, uh, then uh, the elliptic curve is, is a torus. So this might be not obvious from the equation, but uh, you can check that this is true. And uh, you can put your favorite group structure on toes. So you can divide it, so write it as C divided by Z squared uh, in some cases, for example, or more general lattice. Okay, and uh, I just want to say that the general form, general form of the cubic equation is, Uh, y squared z is a1, uh, hope we get it correct, um, a1 y z squared plus a3, no, already got it wrong, so this should be a3 here, uh, a1 y x z, x cubed plus a2 x squared z plus a4 x z squared plus a six uh, z cubed. Okay, just uh, to give you an impression, and uh, and such that a certain polynomial of the a i of the coefficients I have is invertible. So this is uh, to ensure smoothness. So this is just to say that elliptic curves are fairly concrete objects. You can really manipulate them with equations and coordinates if you want to. Although sometimes, of course, it's more convenient to uh, manipulate them in more abstract framework. And um, then if we have some kind of objects, we want to often consider the moduli of all of them. And uh, there's a moduli stack of elliptic curves, which I denote ML. And uh, so in, at least in some frameworks, a modelized stack is something like a groupoid valued functor from say commuter to rings to somewhere and really censoring R just to the groupoid of elliptic curves over R and isomorphisms between them. But uh, so in some sense, a stack is maybe a little bit abstract concept if you come from computational point of view. And I just want to say that this stack can be uh, presented by a Hopf algebraid. 
So the stack, so ML, presented by Hopf Archibald, A gamma, maybe I don't write to write down gamma, but at least want to write down A. Name it's exactly polynomial ring in this A1 to A6, and we have exactly to invert this polynomial delta in this. And this comes from the fact that um, that an elliptic curve is at least locally always given by such a cubic equation. So just by a choice of this A1, A2, A3, A4, and A6, and the map out of polynomial ring is exactly uh, choosing this A1 to A6 in your ring. So this is the basic idea why this is true. And whatever it means that the stack is uh, presented by Hopf algebra, it means it entails in particular that uh, when somebody speaks about quasi covariant sheaves on this model I stack and you don't like stacks, uh, then you can just say it's the same thing as co-modules over the Hopf algebra A gamma. So you can always translate it in your mind. And if somebody speaks about uh, some um, cohomology group here, then and this f corresponds to cohomology m here, uh, then you can your mind just say, okay, this is uh, the cohomology. Okay, now I'm not quite sure what the best notation is. Uh, it's x. So just to kind of, uh, everything is grounded in, com uh, in computational uh, possibilities here. Okay, so um, now let's talk about uh, TMF. So, so Gauss, Hopkins and Miller constructed a certain sheaf of E infinity ring spectra on the modular stack of elliptic curves. And so if you have uh, if you have a sheaf of something on something, your reflex is always you want to take global sections of it and look at that. And this is what is called topological modular forms, TMF. And so why is it called topological modular forms? Well, um, so one can look at the homotopy groups of these sheaves, so it's a sheaf of spectra, so it has homotopy groups. So the odd ones are zero. Uh, which entails particular locally, uh, the sheaf will consist on of complex oriented cohomology theories. And the even ones, well, so uh, we said a little bit earlier that quasi covariant sheaves on ML are equivalent to co modules here. And I guess uh, I'm looking, the co modules are graded, I'm, I'm talking about, to be precise. And it turns out that under this equivalence, these uh, homotopy groups, which are sheaves on ML, really just consider co correspond to the uh, A from the A gamma shifted by 2i. So uh, it's some kind of fairly concrete objects. And uh, then it turns out that the uh, global sections of this pi uh, 2i O top, uh, which is by the way, would be the same thing as uh, taking H zero to I of this co uh, of this Hopf uh, it turns out to be the same as what classical people call modular forms or weakly holomorphic modular forms of weight I. And uh, so, because now we are taking not the global section of the sheaf of abelian groups, but of spectra, we call it topological modular forms. So, and a few words on uh, properties of TMF. So one has that if we localize uh, TMF at an odd prime bigger than three, then it's fairly simple. It's essentially just a polynomial ring where we have inverted one element. So where does this come from? 
so this comes from the fact so there exists a spectral sequence uh, going from the cohomology of this Hopf algebroid A gamma to the homotopy groups of TMF. I guess if I've chosen my NDCs like this, I have to say it's uh, Q minus P. So, and this collapses. If localized Okay, now I've <laughs> noticed I shouldn't have taken P here. Uh, let's call it S and T. Localized at P bigger than three. So, uh, but if P is two or three, we get a lot of interesting stuff, so. Uh, it's very interesting. So for P equals three, the computation is still pretty doable of the uh, of the spectral sequence. For P equals two, I think it's pretty tough. And uh, this can be found, uh, I think first the homotopy was calculated by Hopkins and Mahovold, but uh, you can look at the article by Tillman Bauer uh, to see this computation in a slightly different form. And I should say this spectral sequence actually turns out to be the isomorphic to the adams novikov spectral sequence. Although it's not obvious uh, that actually the E2 term looks like this. Uh, this kind of some theorem one has to prove. But this can be, for example, found in an article by Ake Matthew uh, on homology of TMF. Actually, uh, I want to make a small comment. Um, so maybe this is an aside. There are actually different variants of TMF. There's connective TMF, so-called middle case TMF, and, uh, and the periodic TMF I have here. So this is periodic because we inverted this class delta and this is connective. And then we have some guy in between uh, so this is the connective cover. And Tillman Bauer's article computes the adams novikov spectral sequence of this little TMF guy. Uh, and because, I mean, the state of the art uh, of the literature at that time where he published the article was not, say, perfect on the TMF world. Um, he kind of used without proof what the two term of the adams novikov spectral sequence of little TMF is. And uh, so this was uh, proven, or, I mean, the proof can be found also in the article of Archie Matthew, but he uses a certain fact about the homotopy groups of this middle case guy, uh, where he cites uh, the master thesis of Johan Conta for, but Johan Conta refers uh, for a computation of differentials to um, the paper by Tillman Bauer. So there's a cycle in the literature and uh, which at some point I guess should be removed by, for example, making the computations uh, Johan Conta does kind of, again, uh, without reference to Tillman Bauer's paper, I don't know. Okay, so this was just an aside. So other questions so far? Okay, everybody happy or unhappy enough not to ask questions. Okay, so let's talk about equivariant TMF. So equivalent elliptic cohomology has some history, but um, Jacob Lewy was the first really to define an equivalent version of TMF itself. And um, so there are a lot of insights and ideas behind this, uh, which I guess to numerous to summarize here all. But so let me just say two things about the basic insights Lewy brought to this. So first one is, so we have this stack with the sheaf on E infinity ring spectra. So 
it's kind of much better to just view it as an object in some kind of spectral algebraic geometry or base algebraic geometry on E infinity ring spectra. And if we have this, we can suddenly also talk about what is an elliptic curve over such an gadget here. And this suddenly makes sense. And uh, what Jacob Lewy kind of managed to do is to not only make sense of this, but to define a universal property of this gadget in spectral algebraic geometry. And uh, by this, he managed to put in particular a sheaf of E infinity ring spectra on the universal elliptic curve E. So, so I said before that this modular stack of elliptic curves classifies elliptic curves. And it's like when I say CP infinity classifies line bundles, there's a universal line bundle living over CP infinity, everyth everything is pulled back from. Likewise here, there's a universal elliptic curve over the modelized stack of elliptic curves. And uh, what Jack Lewy in particular did is he put a sheaf of E infinity ring spectra on that. Okay, and this is key to the construction of equivariant TMF. So let me formulate the following theorem, which is essentially due to Lewy, but actually, I mean, his writing so far, one cannot find the full statement. And uh, David Gebner and uh, myself included this in, in our article about the subject. Okay, so um, we have for every abelian compact Lie group, uh, we have an A equivariant spectrum TMFA. So, of course, equivariant, uh, kind of abelian compact Lie groups, there are not so many. You can think about a torus cross a finite abelian group. Okay, so, and of course, these need to have certain properties. Uh, one which I don't want to state is that the non, the kind of, uh, if A is just a trivial group, this is the old TMF. But uh, let me state some properties. So, uh, namely, I want to say something about the fixed points. So such that, if I take the fixed points, the S1 fixed points of the S1 variant version, well, and because I said they are compatible, I will just write um, the S1 fixed point without stressing that it's the S1 equivalent version. So compatible in particular means if S1, you can write S1 as a subgroup of some other compact Lie group, for example, a bigger toes, then this fixed points will agree. Uh, okay, so uh, this will be the global sections of the structure sheaf of the universal elliptic curve of this topological structure sheaf. So this is the first thing. I should also tell you what is uh, the CN fixed points, where CN is my notation for Z mod N. Well, um, I can do the following. I can uh, look at the end torsion inside the universal elliptic curve. So an elliptic curve is as a group structure, an abelian group structure. So it makes sense to speak about the end torsion inside of this abelian group uh, object. And this is this EN. And uh, one can likewise define a sheaf of E infinity ring spectra on this n torsion of elliptic uh, of the universal elliptic curves. Okay, and the uh, CN fixed points of TMF are exactly global sections of this uh, structure sheaf of the uh, n torsion. So you might very well ask now, uh, why should one expect that the fixed points should be these things? And uh, my reflex is always, if I don't understand something about TMF, I go back to K-theory because TMF should be the height two analog of K-theory, of topological K-theory. So uh, we can find a lot of answers just looking back to K-theory. So this is, uh, I mean, I cannot speak for, for Jacob's mind, but at least my mind is inspired by the following thing. So what is pi zero of the S1 fixed point 
of equivariant K-theory. Well, this is just another name for, we take the zeroth S1 equivariant K-theory of a point. So we're talking about S1 equivariant vector bundles on a point. And this again is just a different name for the uh, Groten degree of uh, complex representations of S1. And this is just a Laurent polynomial ring. So where t to the n corresponds to the representation uh, of uh, S1 equaling u1 to u1, which uh, just sends z to z to the n. Okay. So it turns out that, uh, I mean, I'm cutting a long story short here, but this is a group scheme called GM. So the so-called multiplicative group scheme, which is like a height one analog of an elliptic curve, very roughly put. Okay. So in this case, we get GM. So a multiplicative group also corresponds to the fact that the, um, that the formal group law we associate to K theory is a multiplicative formal group law, which is like a, arises from the algebraic geometric manner, uh, manner from this GM. So this is really the analog of the universal elliptic curve we have here. So this is why uh, we put here the universal elliptic curve, something related to this. And, and what happens if we take the CN fixed points? Well, it's the same as the representation ring of CN, which you can calculate. Maybe I don't want to do this calculation here to be the same as this thing. And well, spec of this it's what's called mu n, which is exactly the n torsion in GM. So you see it's an exact analog of what we have above here. Yeah, and I could also tell you something about the uh, fixed points for other abelian groups, but uh, this is essentially one just gets uh, I mean, this is less interesting. I just uh, we'll just get smash products over TMF of the different parts when we take a product. Um, but uh, so the, these are really the interesting cases I want to focus on. So are there questions about this? Okay. So, I mean, this has been very abstract. And so the question I want to ask is how can we calculate these objects? Do we, can we calculate the homotopy groups or can we even calculate them as spectra, whatever this means? And the answer is yes in some cases and no in other cases. And I should say, also one more comment, you can ask what, is for non, what happens for non-abelian compactly groups. So actually there's also a way to define spectra, TMF spectra from fixed points for non-equivalent uh, compact Lie groups. But I think it's fair to say that the, um, there's still some theoretical uh, groundwork uh, missing uh, to really be able to start computing these. Uh, so Haynes says something about topological Jacobi forms. It's actually something I want to come back to uh, in, in a few minutes or at the end of the talk. Okay. So let me start with a finite thing. So, so we are looking at the n torsion of the universal elliptic curve, and just let now just imagine it's not a group scheme or something. This say it's just an abelian group. So then it would decompose into the parts of order k for all k dividing n. And uh, like uh, say, I mean, okay, maybe I don't have to give an example. I mean, you know this from basic algebra. Well, it turns out, I mean, group scheme in general is not a group. So this actually doesn't make sense in general, but if uh, we localize uh, 
at p uh, not dividing n, uh, the intuition is actually true and it decomposes. So uh, the technical term is that uh, this n torsion uh, thing is et al over the modelized equilibrium curves. And uh, so, so unfortunately the notation is a little bit, uh, doesn't really match uh, very well to each other, but this is exactly the part of exact order K. So we're just looking at points in the elliptic curves where the order is exactly K. So uh, turns out that this implies almost directly, I mean, if you evaluate a sheaf on a disjoint union of stuff, you get a product. So we get, this is a product of certain spectra called TMF1K, where uh, TMF1K or TMF1N I've written here, arises by evaluating this uh, this fancy structure sheaf on M1N, this structure sheaf of spectra. And it turns out in some cases we can uh, really compute these things well. Maybe I should have started with TMF11, but okay, TMF11 is the same thing as TMF. And uh, this I could write down easily uh, if localized at a prime bigger than three, but I mean, I don't attempt to write down at primes two and three, but actually TMF1, two, TMF1, three are fairly easy beasts. So it's again, just a polynomial ring with one uh, element inverted in both cases. So they're fairly friendly. So, but uh, I should say to this that pi star TMF one N uh, is hard to write down. as a ring if n is large. I mean, it turns out it's a purely algebraic problem. It has nothing to do with topology in a sense, but it just gets complicated because essentially you have to understand what the addition kind of multiplication by n formula is on elliptic curves and this just gets complicated. Um, nevertheless, so I kind of said the ring, writing down the ring is hard but actually if we are a content with a little bit less, it becomes easier. So there's a, th a theorem proved a while ago that, uh, so let uh, P not divide N. So then if we complete team of one N at P splits as a TMF module. and to shift the copies of uh, I mean, there are three options depending what the prime is. So prime might be two, three or bigger than three. So if bigger than three, we actually get copies of TMF itself, which is friendly if primes are bigger than three. Here I get TMF one, two. And here I get TMF one, three. So it splits into objects we understand very well. And uh, hence the same is true for uh, this uh, CN fixed points if we completed a point P. And in many cases you can also replace completing at P by localizing at P but uh, I don't know it to be true with localizing at P in all cases. So this means that uh, if we complete at a prime not dividing N, this thing is fairly friendly. We can understand it pretty well. So questions about this part. So if we say we can understand it when the prime is not dividing n, well, then it's always question what happens if the prime is dividing n. So let's look at the bad primes. 
or I guess I shouldn't say bad, but I should say interesting. And this is a topic uh, until very recently, um, this was, I think essentially nothing was known or let's say very little was known, but actually Dexter Chua very recently has computed um, this, this C2 fixed points localized at two. So at the interesting prime. And so he calculated its homotopy groups, but he did something which at least in my eyes is even better. Uh, he computed it as a TMF module. So what do I mean by this? Well, uh, he showed that this thing splits, I guess I should also localize it too here. So there are two copies uh, of TMF itself, which I will say something about in a moment. And then there's one other copy, some little more mysterious guy, namely we smash TMF with a certain four cell complex. So what's this four cell complex? Maybe let me zoom in. Because my two really looks like an eater if I look at it. Um, so, I mean, the details are maybe not so important, but uh, you uh, you cone of uh, new, then uh, you cone of eater, and then you cone of uh, two. And you can show that actually these uh, this kind of describes a well-defined uh, finite complex with four cells. Okay. So this gives really complete information about this, uh, this TMF module. Um, so where this DL comes from in this case, I think it's a little bit hard to explain. And I'm not sure there's really, um, really conceptual insight into this, at least not by me. So this, this proof of a Dexter is really computational, but one can say something about these two copies of TMF because uh, one actually has always uh, two maps. So, uh, so first of all, one has the inflation map. So this equivariant TMF it's a little like equivalent K-theory. It's a little bit extra functionality, which you don't always have in an equivariant spectrum. So usually you can only restrict to subgroups. But if you have this extra structure like here, you can actually also restrict uh, along arbitrary group homomorphisms. So in particular, you have a group homomorph from C2 to the trivial group. And this provides inflation functor from TMF to TMFC2. And uh, maybe let me say something about this, which actually holds in general. So if uh, you have TMFG, you have this inflation functor from TMF equals TMFE. And then you can restrict back along the inclusion. And uh, because uh, the map from E to G to E is the identity, this implies that this composite is also the identity. So this means uh, TMF always splits off TMFG. Okay. And the uh, same is two also here. And then uh, you have a different thing, namely you can take the transfer from the trivial group uh, to the group C2. And this provides the other map. And with the transfer, I think there's no obvious reason why it should split off in this case, but uh, it follows from the computation at the end. So, uh, so I want to say that, so, this really non-trivial -compu non computation and it's uh, kind of non-trivial in several levels. So the first non-trivial thing is actually to understand the kind of completely algebraically this two torsion of the universal elliptic curve. So what Dexter does, he can write down, so this is some stack and Dexter writes down a Hopf algebra uh, uh, presenting it. Then he computes a cohomology of the Hopf algebra and then he wants an Adams-Novikov spectral sequence. 
and uh, use some additional arguments to actually get the equivalence to, uh, to this thing here. And I mean, it's also exciting that he uses techniques from synthetic spectra in running this adams novikov spectra sequence. And but even kind of when I was looking at this problem kind of some years ago, I, I mean, I always kind of already didn't succeed to do the first step, the purely algebraic thing uh, to understand the two torsion, but they found a nice way to do this. And uh, so if, uh, if one wants to understand Um, TMFCN, one first needs to understand uh, explicitly. This N torsion. So this is kind of a kind of one of the first problems. I think this should be accessible for n equals three, for example. So uh, uh, I want to mention that. So, so if you look at this complex here, uh, in some sense, it's built by coning of a torsion element, coning of a torsion element, and then killing something by coning of two. So for example, if you look at the say you look at the rational cohomology or something like this, um, this will have rank two instead of rank four. And this also fits with that um, the elliptic curve you expect to have four two torsion elements. So this should be really thought of a rank four thing. So, and so in general, you might uh, ask, uh, can I, if I want to understand TMFCN, can I maybe, uh, ah, so there's a question whether I can elaborate on synthetic spectra. Uh, I think he uses uh, synthetic spectra for uh, MU to understand the adams novikov spectra sequence. But what I just want to say, if you want to understand team FCN and ask, can I similarly build it by coning of torsion elements and then killing generators and so on. Um, so actually I did some work on these kind of things in my thesis. At the prime three, I, uh, I showed that it's kind of a purely algebraic criterion on the EN here, uh, which would imply that one can build them uh, in this manner by coding of torsion elements, actually coding of two torsion elements, then killing a generator, coding of two torsion elements, killing a generator, and so on. Uh, which, and if you know this is possible, there are of course only finitely many possibilities how you might uh, cone, I mean, there are only so and so many torsion elements in TMF. So one might actually figure out which torsion elements these are. And I think this should be, uh, if you want to compute this guy, this should be doable. I mean, it's not easy, but I think it should be doable. Okay. So questions about this part. Okay. So um, then I uh, leave the finite groups uh, behind and go to the circle. And um, luckily for the circle, it's actually much easier what happens. We don't have to do any hard computations. Um, so there has been a theorem by David Gefner and myself, uh, which describes the, uh, the S1 fixed bonds of TMF in a pretty easy manner. Namely, uh, it's just TMF plus a one fold shift of TMF. And you might already guess what the two maps are. These are essentially the same maps we have seen before for the CN fixed points. So this is the inflation map. And we know it always splits off. And well, and this is the transfer map. But you must ask, why is there a shift? Well, we use the degree shifting transfer map. So S1 has dimension one. Uh, and so in general, we would have to kind of shift by the kind of the Lie algebra of the, of the compact Lie group. Well, S1 has a one dimensional trivial Lie algebra. So we just have a one fold shift. So this is a degree shifting transfer. So 
And note this is uh, quite different uh, from what happens for K-theory. So note, KUS1 was this guy, and this implies that KUS1 is, uh, is an infinite number of copies of KU. So while here, for TMF, we actually get a finite module. So why is this? Well, at the core of this, that elliptic curves are, uh, in topological word, I would say compact. So proper would be the algebraic geometry uh, word. And global sections and cohomology groups of uh, proper schemes or things like this are always finite dimensional. So this is really what's behind this. And we're taking global sections here it's global sections of the structure sheaf of the universal elliptic curve, the topologically. So we would expect something finite dimensional, something finite. And actually um, having these two copies here, bolts down in some sense, I mean, there are some extra arguments one has to make. In some sense, it boils down the end back to the very uh, kind of classical fact that, so if E is an elliptic curve, over a field. And you, if you want, you can really take the field to be C. Then we have that the cohomology with respect to the structure sheaf is K if star is zero and one and zero else. So we really have just uh, two copies of the base here. And the base in our case would be the Corresponding to the modelized stack with elliptic curve, and where we evaluate a uh, uh, fancy structure shift, there we get TMF. So we would really expect two copies of TMF. And uh, one is non shifted coming from the zeroth cohomology, and one is shifted by one coming first cohomology. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit more to the story, but this is the very basic uh, intuition behind this. Okay. And let me use the uh, last few minutes to come back to what Haynes. Uh, mentioned before, namely topological Jacobi forms. Uh, namely, I mean, I talked a lot about the computation of fixed points, but I mean, as equivariant homotopy fans know, there are a lot of different kinds of fixed points there. And actually one kind of fixed points I want to consider here would be, I'm not sure there's an official notation for this. This is some kind of variant of geometric fixed points, namely uh, what I want to do is uh, I take TMF, I smashed it with uh, the infinite dimensional sphere where I act on C by the obvious rotation action of S1 and then take S1 fixed points. So what does this geometrically correspond to? So this corresponds to um, sections I'm a little bit vague here, so I put in quotes of O top E of the structure sheaf of the universal elliptic curve, where we allow poles, poles of arbitrary order. Uh, at the neutral element. And um, at least in, I mean, I'm not sure there's a 100% standardized definition of Jacobi forms, but uh, at least one definition of science literature would be a way I kind of forget about the top here and just look at uh, sections of the universal elliptic curve or of an elliptic curve, a universal elliptic curve, which has exactly this kind of condition, poles of arbitrary order at the neutral element, holomorphic everywhere else. So this might be, this thing might be called uh, TJF. And I think this is a really interesting spectrum because uh, uh, if one looks at uh, the classical literature on elliptic genera, of the two variable uh, elliptic genera, uh, which tend to take values in Jacobi forms. And I think uh, one should kind of be able to kind of produce uh, in best of all worlds, um, uh, kind of an equivariant string orientation, which at the end would then kind of give a refinement of two variable elliptic genera to uh, topological Jacobi forms. But uh, I cannot say that I really figured out this story, um, but 
question is, uh, can we compute this guy? And uh, I actually have a conjecture about this, uh, namely that uh, TJF P splits into shifted copies. of uh, the same thing that we have seen before. Yeah. But this is not proven yet. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, it's maybe a good moment to stop the talk here. Okay. So first of all, let's thank Lenart.